is World of Warcraft still the GOAT MMORPG? This is a video, a lot of people upvoted it on my Reddit. I'm gonna watch it. Here we go. World of Warcraft. My on again, off again. 15 year long abusive relationship with this game has really been something to witness over the years. And here she is pulling me right back in with a brand new expansion called Dragonflight. No, it's been a little while since I played this game, but I can quite comfortably say that back in the day, World of Warcraft just had no equal. And I'm not even joking when I tell you that I had multiple opportunities to lose my virginity in high school and I blew all of them off. Zach and I did the exact same thing. This girl came over to our house. It was like three in the morning and we were 16 and we were like, yo, and she wanted to go out. She wants to go out driving because she stole her dad's car. And, and like, she was super hot. We both really liked her a lot. And she had her friend there with her too. And these two girls wanted us to go out driving around with them in her dad's car. And she was like way too young to drive too. And so anyway, uh, <laughs> We're playing, uh, we're like leveling up in, in, uh, what was it in, in Westfall, we were leveling up in Westfall and I closed the door on her and I was talking to Zach. I'm like, okay, so if we go out with her and then we're doing that, we're probably not going to be home until at least like four. Right. And then if we go and we, we play at four until like six and sun comes up and then we sleep for like three hours, like there's literally no fucking way we're going to make it to dead mines tonight if we go with her. And he's like, yeah, I don't know. And I'm like, yeah, man. I mean, it's just, bro, like, I don't fucking, that's not going to happen. And so I opened the door like, yeah, mom said we can't go. Sorry, bitch. Later. Close the fucking door. We listen to Dragon Force and land the fuck out all night long. And you know what? We did do dead mines. It was fucking great just to get a few extra hours of game yeah. time in. And you want to know something interesting? Story never happened? Ask Zach. I don't regret it at all. I mean, sure, an yeah, intimate lovemaking session with someone you really care about sounds pretty good. But have you ever experienced the sheer ecstasy of topping a DPS chart? An yeah. in-depth, no punches pull story that got real dark sometimes. Yeah. And of course, absolutely shredding someone in PvP. Yep. I'm not ashamed to say it. I was in love, but that was then. And this is now. And as easy as it would be to just say that I changed as a person, that would be an outright lie. I mean, sure, we did have our rough patches. And yeah. I wasn't always the most faithful player. But I also wasn't the one who turned into a fucking gold digger. I wasn't the one who kept changing and gaslighting all the history and story we'd been through over the years. <laughs> Watch your clever mouth. Nice lady. Yeah, Someone true. Someone please help. Blizzard removed my testicles. And most of all, True. I wasn't the one stealing pregnant woman's titty milk out of the break room fridge. Over the years, WoW really did me dirty. And now like a salty ex who just mm -hmm. can't quite let go of what she was in the past. Here mm -hmm. I am crawling back on my hands and knees, ready to give things another shot and figure out if WoW is still the god of MMOs or just another worn out, beat up, ready to settle down, money... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh my god grubbing mess still clinging to her old glory days now it would be quite uh -huh. easy to just jump right in pretend oh, everything's fine great. like nothing bad happened in the past but we're not idiots yeah. So let's start mending or completely shattering what's left of this relationship where everyone should start when considering an old flame, but no one does. Okay. The numbers. Let's not beat around the Elwyn Forest bushes here. WoW was never your modest, small town, low maintenance MMO. She was always sure? walking around with some real massive play accounts. These yeah. days though, they're looking a little bit deflated, but context is required. That's only when comparing to her past self. The second that you start comparing to some of her competitors, you get a better idea of exactly what she's really packing. Oh, but yeah, quick side note for all the graphs that I use in this video. Mm -hmm. I've had to pull and verify most of the data you'll be seeing here by myself over the last few months. I had to do this in whatever way I could because most of the graphs and numbers that you'll see out there on the internet are just completely wrong. 
For instance, if you were to look at most of the numbers that you would find- Oh, how'd you get them though? Because like, I don't think that's accurate. I want to see how you got them. Obviously, I think that anybody with a brain can acknowledge that World of Warcraft during original Wrath of the Lich King was the peak of MMOs. Final Fantasy last year, Endwalker, will never remotely come close to that. Neither will New World, Lost Ark, Blue Protocol, any of these fucking games. The next game that's going to do that is going to be some fucking Sword Art Online shit. Find on these game journalist websites, it doesn't take a genius to realize that most of these numbers have been yanked right out from between the writer's ass cheeks. Yes. And simply because I don't quite yet have the same levels of hubris that they do, I'm going to warn you that there is still room for error, even on my graphs. I've made them as accurate as I can, but the only ones who really know the numbers are Blizzard. So just yeah. keep that in mind. Anyway, I'm digressing. See, the reality is that all of us, MMOs included, are fighting against the inevitable ravages of time. And there's only so many ways you can reinvent yourself before people stop caring. But for now, at least, even at its lowest, WoW has- Uh, is that true? I don't think so. I mean, look at Final Fantasy, for example. Final Fantasy 1, people like that one, and everybody is really highly anticipating Final Fantasy 16 30 years later. So I, I don't think that you will run out of people that are excited about the content as long as you have people, as long as you're making the same content. Like, let me think of some other examples of this. Uh, fuck. Uh, there are plenty of things that have, you know, they've been working like uh, fucking the Rolling Stones. Okay. These guys made music in the 60s and they're still fucking selling out massive auditoriums. They're like 90 years old or something like that. So yes, it doesn't matter as long as you're keep, you keep giving people the stuff that they want or you adapt and evolve in a way that people like. Look at fucking Pokemon, Legend of Zelda, Counter-Strike. It's the same fucking game. It's not even like Legend of Zelda. Like we've had some pretty big changes between Legend of Zelda 1 and Breath of the Wild, but Counter-Strike, it's just, it's the same fucking thing, basically. Smash Brothers, yeah, I, I don't think that it will ever run out of style unless they let it happen. Always had the player numbers to blow the dick off of every other game in the genre. True, true, so true. that's it, right? Case closed. WoW is definitively the best. The best. And every other MMO out there is just radioactive L copium. Lose, Except not quite. See, player count is only one metric that helps us determine where this game is and what well, it's- Also, like, you have to keep in mind that he was comparing the player count the game had at its absolute peak, not its current player count. It's doing right now. The big mistake that we all tend to make, myself included, is confusing popularity with success. See, the old formula of bigger player count equals more success. I would actually argue that with MMOs, popularity does to a certain extent mean success. Because if you don't have a lot of people that are playing the game, that means the game is not going to have as many updates. Which means that the game is going to get worse over time because it's not being updated. There's no profit incentive to update it. Uh, also, it means that your experience in the game will probably be diminished because the amount of people the game is designed for are not playing the game. So there is a point where the amount of population of the game does matter. However, I think what matters more than current population is trajectory. So for example, World of Warcraft in uh, like a Warlords of Draenor lost like 2.7 million subscribers in one quarter. So that was really bad. But even after it lost the subscribers, it had more subscribers than uh, most of Mists of Pandaria. But everybody would pretty much say that Warlords of Draenor was worse than Mists of Pandaria. So what really matters is not the current number, it's the trajectory. So for example, that's why people that are playing New World can feel confident and happy that their game is, you know, pretty much stabilizing around like 40 to 50,000 players with no content update in months because things are stabilizing at a point where the game is at a playable mass that is continuing to enjoy it and content is continuing to be released. So, but if your game is consistently going down, big fucking surprise, people are going to stop playing it. 
and they're going to stop developing content for it. And then when they stop, whenever they stop developing content, then you're going to have more people quit. Is a bit of an outdated concept, especially when it comes to MMOs, since they're a I live think popularity service game. Matter. Put it this way. Free quick math. Let's say you make an MMO that has Ooh. half a million players and pulls in half a million dollars a month. That sounds pretty good. Until you realize that it's going to cost you one million dollars a month to keep your game up and running and that's yeah. not even considering initial development costs marketing updates and future expansions and as you can probably tell bob tovation blizzard's operational costs are a lot higher now imagine you've got a buddy who also made an mmo but they've only got a hundred thousand players and pull in a hundred thousand dollars a month okay. but their operational costs are only 50,000 a month. Now I know this example and the numbers I'm using are very reductive, but the principle remains the same. And guess which one of you- What he's doing is he's giving you a reason for why mobile games exist. Very high profit margins, very low overhead. Not hard to understand. Who's likely to last longer unless something changes and fast. Worse than that, World of Warcraft isn't even alternative Balduct's biggest earner anymore. Now, whatever you might think about this cancerous tumor called Diablo Immortal, I played it turns out one. Blizzard was right. People do actually have phones and very little willpower. In its short Who the fuck didn't think this was going to happen? I think people weren't mad that Diablo Immortal didn't work. They were mad because they knew it would lifespan. Dibbles Mobile has raked in more cash than World of Warcraft has in the year of 2021. And the game is free to play, mobile. technically speaking. All I'm saying money. is why would Activate the Bacon put in all this love, energy, resources, time and effort to craft something with a soul, with an epic and grandiose world and story that almost constantly is never enough for its players, when instead they can just shit out an ultra monetized psychologically manipulative mobile shit fest oh, that makes them one. a whole golden boatload is this game good Th this like warcraft like uh heroes game is it actually good no no okay e literally everybody is saying it's no okay who cares well i don't know maybe it'd be fun cash and something with us all this hurts to say even when i'm mad at blizzard but while success is beginning to fade in the face of modern gaming. And it's likely no longer going to be the primary development focus for Activision Blizzard. That is unless, at least in the short term, there's something a little bit more solid that can be. Uh... I don't think that it should be the prime development focus for Blizzard because World of Warcraft is built on a 2001 or 2003 engine. They need to look towards the future. It doesn't mean they should cancel the franchise or stop making expansions. But they need to look towards the future, too. That's why you have things like Overwatch. Overwatch is great. Um, Heroes of the Storm, that was a miss. <sighs> Milked out of the game. Inevitably. Looking oh, again at look the numbers, who it is. in the paraphrased words of a Wendy's munching attic goblin that's far more prolific than I will ever be on the internet. One hair <laughs> on a head doesn't really tell you anything, but the more hairs you look at, the better idea you have of where this hairline is going. And this one at least looks like it's receding pretty fucking quickly away oh, from fuck. World of Warcraft. Oh, so the game can oh, still be considered fuck. successful, but every other game <sighs> that they're churning out is starting to make them that much more cold, hard cash. I do not think that is an argument, however, for World of Warcraft not being continuously updated. And I will use an example of the other game that World of Warcraft is constantly... Yeah, he did get me. He absolutely fucking got me. I forgot all about that video. Um, if a good example of a... An example of... Fuck, I, I got so distracted by that fucking comment. I, I forgot what I was going to say. Right. Okay, so Final Fantasy... If, are you familiar with the term loss leader? Loss leader means that a company sells a product at a loss in order to get people into a store and make them buy other things. I would argue that Blizzard could still use World of Warcraft as a loss leader in the same way that I think Square Enix uses Final Fantasy XIV. Because Square Enix does a lot of absolutely shady things. Nobody's talking about the fact that Square Enix has doubled down three separate times on uh, NFTs. 
and having blockchain stuff in their fucking games. Nobody talks about this anymore. Nobody cares because Final Fantasy 14 is really good. So you want to have a good game. That way, whenever people get mad at the bad games, you can be like, yeah, but we got the good game. You see what I'm saying? So I don't think that this means they're going to stop developing Warcraft at all. Because you use Warcraft as the loss leader to get people in the door, and then you get them in Diablo Immortal. And then they spend all their money. So it's World of Warcraft is a gateway drug. Just like all the Fox News segments said, it turned out to be true. Way less effort. Over the years, Activist Be Censored has proven that what matters more than any game they make is money. They will do whatever they need to, put whatever object in whatever orifice they have to, to not lose market share. And yep. that means caring way less about what your long-term players think and feel, and more about the monetizable oh trends of the unwashed gaming masses. This kind of mindset means you're trying to- You know to my video watching that has like 2 million views? It's crazy. Final Fantasy directors, none of that. Those directors completely against it. But you, but do you see what I'm saying? Though, how Final Fantasy can not have any of that bad stuff, but Final Fantasy can still be used as something that builds Square Enix's brand, so they can afford to lose brand points in other areas. Figure out how do you get them to it's spend like as much donation. money as possible on whatever product you're pushing, complete or not. And guess what? Complain all you want. But so far, it's working out for them pretty fucking great. Put bluntly, if phone games like Diablo Immoral keep posting profits like this, nothing you say has any value to them. Because that's true. And I would apply that to pretty much every single company because they care about money. Transactions speak louder than words. They have zero incentive. Transactions speak louder than YouTube comments is a better... It's a better way to put it into perspective. That's what it really does. To not double down and dedicate more resources to what they would now consider to be the future of gaming. But of course, that's just the numbers. Yeah. And I'm just a hazer. All of what I've said so far is about the past or the future, not about the present. And I'm yes. pretty sure I didn't title this video where WoW is gonna be in five years or where it was five years. Oh, I've done this one. Yeah, I do this about every week. Yeah, look at this. Is well, holy shit. Look at this. Yeah, I know this. Years in the past. So let's take a look at the current gameplay instead. Okay, let's because take a look what at it. we all really care about as MMO gamers is what she feels like when we're inside of her. <laughs> I'm going to be shocked if there's any monetization on this video by the time I'm done here. <laughs> So currently, WoW is experiencing what some would call a returning golden age. Classic is in its wrath phase, and the Dragonflight expansion looks pretty amazing. They even gave us Blue Kale Thus. Every and to be fair, I, I really think that the character modeling, the cinematics, the in-game cinematics in Dragonflight, I said it on release, I'll say it again, they are fucking incredible. They have more detail, more emotion, and more work put into them than we've ever had before. I love it. I hope they keep doing it. And the stories were pretty good, too. Everyone and their grandmother who moved to Thailand is raving about how good the game is right now. And they're not wrong. This expansion is super fun, despite the prior presence of a certain rotting elf corpse that's been ruining the story over the past few years. WoW is beginning to show that old spark of wonder once again, with gameplay and complexity in all the right places like the talent tree, the new flying mechanics that they yanked right out of Guild Wars 2, Stolen. and even how you experience the leveling. And at bare minimum, this makes the game at least twice as enjoyable as it was before. There's plenty good to talk about here in Retail WoW right now, from the new event. Yes, I, I would say that Retail WoW is good right now. It is fun to play. I do think that there are some problems fundamentally with some of the end game systems. The game has to work through them. I hope it does in the next expansion or so. But it's it's good. It's good. You don't have to play it right now. 
and you're not going to get behind. But you can if you want to, and I think that's fucking great. Mythic Plus Stale is two weeks old bread, though. Well, then don't do it. Is Dragonflight better than Legion? In a, in a lot of ways, Dragonflight is better than Legion. In other ways, Dragonflight is not better than Legion. Like, for example, if you were a high-end raider, I think that you probably enjoyed Dragonflight. You probably enjoyed Dragonflight more than Legion. Because Legion basically made you feel like you were a sweatshop worker. As a casual player, I could see somebody still enjoying Legion more. And also, Legion was such a massive step up in quality in like 2016, 17, whenever it came out, that it was so much better than what we had had any other expansion before that, that it was proportionally that much more impressive at the time. Ochre class to the cool looking dragons Le to the far higher levels of custom all i'm saying is that people remember the last half of legion the first half was terrible customizability in playstyle, ui and character even the professions seem to be relevant again but with all that complimenting i just can't help but want to crap in everyone's morning cornflakes the big problem we're still facing is that blizzard is still blizzard no matter how yeah. good the current WoW expansion yeah, true. is, they've still fucked up over and uh -huh. over again. They've ruined their players' trust and taken a hot, steamy dump in their eyeballs after promising nothing but the purest of epic fantasy. They've lost a lot of trust over the last few years, That's true. both with in-game and IRL shenanigans. And from a purely business perspective, it might not even be worth it for them to climb that mountain instead of just refocusing their efforts on another game or somewhere else entirely. Now, putting aside the IRL Blizzard... Yeah, I don't think that's the case. I think that Blizzard can continue to use World of Warcraft as an IP to push other things in like their mobile universes that will cause them to make even more money. So effectively, like, again, World of Warcraft might not have the best profit overhead, but it's a legacy game. It's something that, like, establishes, like, who Blizzard is, what Blizzard is, like Hearthstone, right? Like, World of Warcraft enabled Hearthstone, Hearthstone to exist. It enabled part of Heroes of the Storm to exist. So I do think that World of Warcraft will continue to be developed because it allows them to generate and create a world that they can monetize in other ways. And also, they monetize the fuck out of World of Warcraft. You have to pay to play the fucking game. You, have, you can buy gold. You can buy WoW tokens. You can buy store mounts. You can buy level boosts. You can buy pets. They're making a lot of fucking money. Problems for a second and just focusing on the game. What happens after Dragonflight? Do know. we go through the same cycle of the next expansion being utter dog shit before they learn their lesson? again yep. and release something decent but to even less fanfare than before because i've lost it. this is my favorite one right here <laughs> this one right here bro <laughs> that's really the way it felt like too i love this meme yeah yeah exactly <laughs> the meme timeline yeah another group of players who knows maybe this <laughs> i haven't seen this one. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> the corruption over his face. <laughs> the fucking heart of Azeroth. And then this one here. We got fucking, what is this? Like soul cinders, soul fucking embers. Uh, Corthia fucking a carrot on his stick. And the carrot's broken. <laughs> and he's in chains. Oh no. This is a new era for them. Then there's that missing oh, no. feeling of novelty that WoW used to have. Yeah. Don't confuse what I'm saying with nostalgia here. I'm talking about that unique experience, that thing that oh, sticks with yeah. you. That one effect or graphic from a video game that's just imprinted onto your neurons forever. And if you still Frozen don't quite throne. understand what I'm talking about when I say Storm novelty, Gates. let's take a look at some other games. New World might have been a buggy mess at launch, but its sound design always stood out as incredible. RuneScape might not good. have the graphics, but it had its crafting systems and its atmospheric music. The quest lines seem pretty good in RuneScape had its flight too. systems. Guild Wars 2 had its NPC interactions and landscapes. 
You know, even Mortal Online 2 has something just floppily memorable about it. Maybe it's just me here, but modern WoW just doesn't have those standout features anymore. It all feels so standout. I think that's true. I think that World of Warcraft's standout features right now are its in-game systems. Like, the people that are going to be diehard WoW fans right now are either super casuals or hardcore players. Raid content, arena, and Mythic Plus. Standardized, so risk-free. Firing a gun no longer sounds like you just took a quick drive through Chicago. Earning a mount just doesn't have the same appeal when you can buy all the better looking ones off of the in-game store for real money. I That's could true. really go on forever about this. Back in the day, WoW was an innovator and a trendsetter. Oh, he Almost did everything oh, it God, did, did left an impression on you. From the sound design, to the story, to the mechanics, to the atmosphere, to the neat little tricks that you would have to specifically learn to become a true master of whatever class you chose to main. But even after playing Dragonflight, the only thing that really sticks out to me is watching Rathion, the rightful heir and child of Neltharion, cower like a little bitch, please fucking show who it. was the most badass dragon WoW has ever seen, True. getting fucking defeated by a by rock, by a stray piece of debris. Pathetic. You know, the very element his aspect is supposed to be in control of. And it was so fucking pathetic. It was, and I feel like all they they only did all of this to make Rathian seem less cool. Because in my opinion, like, yeah, Rathian's had some L's, like, you know, getting everybody killed in Warlords of Draenor, and, you know, that was kind of a bad call. But the thing is that, at the end of the day, it worked. So, like, Rathian, he makes plays. Now, every play doesn't work, but it certainly is a play. Yeah, I went civilian after that. Well, that's the thing, right? It's like, I, I think that they just made him unlike. I think they made him more unlikable in, in Dragonflight on purpose to make the other black Dragonflight leaders seem more equivalent. That's my opinion. Civilian should be the aspect. No, he shouldn't. He like, what the fuck did he do? He didn't do anything. Honestly, the foundation of the game still leans on some incredibly archaic systems that only have limited solutions to them, no matter how much they're updated. You see, usually, in order to attract as broad an audience as possible, a game is designed to have an easy learning curve and a high skill ceiling. World of Warcraft accomplishes this by slowly feeding you more abilities as you level up and getting you comfortable with their multiple gameplay mechanics, giving you more options in playstyle as you grow as a player. But one of the problems is the leveling experience is now pretty compressed from what I can tell. And they shit buttons out at you at a fairly rapid pace. And if I think that there probably could be too many buttons and wow, I would I, I would indulge an idea that that is probably the case. Because it's like you compare, uh, I don't know, like, I mean, like New World or, uh, I mean, New World is super fucking simple. It's probably too simple. Like Lost Ark, you've got eight abilities, maybe nine if you count the Awakening, uh, maybe ten if you're like Mayhem Berserker or something like that. Very few. And uh, that's it. It would be nice if WoW was able to cut down on a few more abilities, but I don't want to see that happen in a lot of ways because it's like last time that happened, it just made the game a lot worse unwilling to go out of your way to try customize your UI and control experience through the settings menu and several add-ons, there's plenty that just feels lackluster when compared to the control schemes of newer MMOs. This might be a difficult thing to do, but I don't want you to think about yourself when I'm talking about this. Okay. Because if you somehow stumbled across my garbage channel, it's very well, likely yeah, that you're games. very invested into MMOs or you're just a veteran of the space. Yes. But take a moment to consider your brand new MMO player who's never played there one go, of these There you go, there you go. Beat the fucking Imagine shit out of me. There you go. Good. gameplay for Good. the first time. Trying to figure Kids are gonna be all out which right. one of these MMOs is going to suit them best. Do you think they're more likely to... Which MMO is going to suit a kid best? I'll tell you which MMO. It's the MMO called Fortnite. Kids aren't playing MMOs. They take too fucking long. And kids didn't play MMOs back then either, usually. Like, most people started World of Warcraft whenever they were, like, 13 to, to, to 18. Like, I, I think many people started World of Warcraft, like, 
at 13 to 18. That was 19. Yeah, somewhere around there. Like, I don't think you had a lot of seven-year-olds playing well. Now, there were. There were absolutely seven-year-olds playing well. But I think that there were also a lot of older people doing that, too. Understand what's going on here. How the fuck did that miss? Need oh, here. Break. Get ready to break it. Oh, my God. Make sure you guys are also doing this. The simple fact is that WoW is currently having trouble attracting new players and a younger audience. And worse than that, if they simplified WoW like they've tried to in the past, they'd still have a hard time attracting new MMO gamers while now losing their old players too. What well, they have to they have to make a new game. Like if you want to actually make WoW good again, you have to make a new game. But they have to either do that or reinvent the game in classic WoW or like a classic plus situation like OSRS. Because like you, you can't have wars in World of Warcraft because if you do, everybody lags out. It's insane. The 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 engine sucks. Uh the the fucking graphics suck. It's just outdated. It's still a good game. We still play RuneScape. I think Final Fantasy is kind of outdated too, to be honest. It's not like it's this perfect, amazing fucking game, though. Like, it, it's not next gen. It's not going to catch people by surprise. People might not remember this, but like, whenever World of Warcraft came out, it looked amazing. It was like you're comparing, like, even like the other games, like 2004, like, so you think like Half Life 2, Halo 2. I think if you go back and you play World of Warcraft Classic, Classic WoW holds up better than both of those in terms of graphics. Would you say right now is the most exciting and interesting part of World of Warcraft, whether you're looking at classic or retail? It's the latest expansion, right? Well, to get there and experience that new, shiny, exciting content that everyone is touching themselves over, you're going to have to drag yourself through 60 levels of an experience that just might not feel worth your time or effort when all you want to do is ride some dragons. True. And since WoW has so many Very expansions true. and stories stacked up on top of one another, it's quite... I, th I find it to be impressive. I think they've made Alex Draza hotter. And it is impressive that Blizzard has managed to make her more... Like, have her wear more clothes and also make her hotter challenge as a newbie to try and untangle that mess before navigating your way through it. And worse than that, the players who aren't invested huh. and are new have almost zero reason to care about the story. And guess what? This was a... I can't believe I did that. I'll tell y'all, like, I, I will, uh, you know... I... I can't. Nice legs. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I've shaved them never. You were hot, to be honest. Uh huh. It was for charity. The worst part is that it wasn't. I did this for free. But you could, as a new player, buy a boosted character. But yeah. now you're going to be lost on how to play without some external guide. And while to a new player is very quickly starting to look like a money sinkhole mm -hmm. in comparison to other games. And what you're basically being told by the existing community yeah, is that you're not allowed to make a judgment on the game until you've already played 20 to 30 hours, reached level 60, and then begun your real in-game journey. Which I is think that there's two different judgments for that. I don't think that you can provide an adequate review of an MMORPG after only playing it for 20 hours. But I do think that a bad MMORPG in the first hour, I think a game should be good in hour one. What, it takes you an hour for the game to be good? What the fuck? I've got other things I need to do. I don't have time for this shit. What is this? So yeah, I think it should be immediately fucking good. It's just the last 10 levels, followed by the end game where all the actual content is. But there's two different is. judgments. Now there. that might not two seem all that bad if you're your regular masochist MMO player.
after all, you've been here forever already and there's no getting off this ride. Yeah, but that's a that's pretty true. heavy time investment for your average person this is a nice who game. in that same like time span could have completed at least three single player games by themselves. So with all that said, with all the cards laid bare on the table before us, with all my whining about how I'm just incapable of removing these rose-tinted glasses and comparing WoW to its past self, we've still got to answer the question. Is WoW still the GOAT? And the answer is yes. See, even with Activision Blizzard's missteps over the years, they've managed to maintain something that not many other MMOs do. A core player base. And every time they yeah, see those subscription so. numbers start to drop, even if it's only because they care about the money, they at least try to do something. They pretend like they care for at least like six months, okay? Like, they'll be like, yeah, guys, we're listening. We're going to change the bad system finally. And also, so we have a new system. It's pretty much the old system, uh, but there aren't any of the improvements, and it's coming out next week about it to retain players mm -hmm. and after playing my way as far as i can into dragonflight even i'm sitting here thinking i wish i knew how to quit you despite all my bitching about the story there are still some good solid well-written characters that they just haven't figured out how to disenchant yet the fantasy of the game True. is still in there somewhere and dragonflight proves by the way i never really thought i never thought uh varian was that cool or that interesting I, I just, I never thought he was Zachary. Is that? But that doesn't mean this old girl is always going to be on top. At some point, we're going to be taking her out back, letting her see the sunrise one right. last time before we load up that double-barreled cancel subscription button and firing away. Now, whether that happens because Activate My Almonds can simply make more money through selling predatory wallet raping games on mobile and stops caring about WoW entirely or because something newer that just does everything better comes along at some point. I'm I don't think that's going to matter. Like, in my opinion, I think that Elden Ring does everything that Dark Souls 3 does, and it does it better. I think Elden Ring is better than Dark Souls 3 in every single way. But I would still go back and play Dark Souls 3 every once in a while. Sure. So it doesn't mean that I'm going to come back. I'm going to, I'm never going to play it again. So yeah, I don't think so. Boss fights. Oh, wow. There's like seven bosses in Dark Souls 3 that are good. What did you forget about the fucking ancient Wyvern? What about that? Uh, Asirios, uh, uh, who just runs around screaming while you hit him and he doesn't do anything. There's so many bad bosses in Dark Souls 3. Yeah, it has a few good ones, but so does Elden Ring. Mains to be seen. My bet is still the same as the one I've stated before. The only thing that's going to kill World of Warcraft is World of Warcraft. They've been but trying now, that. Activision Blizzard. Here's your crown, King. Just remember. No king rules forever, my son. Hey. I think WoW, like, I mean, I was playing Warcraft th Warcraft 2. Like, I would, uh, I, I would sit with my As mom. As always, big oh, thank to all my subscribers, both old and new. <laughs> <laughs> And a special thank to the MMO Relationship Therapy Association. Okay. You get to watch this video before anyone else. This was this a great video. I love this. I hope you guys subscribe to this guy. He's really so funny. Excuse me for taking so long to get to it. Anyway, more content soon. I hope Bye. so. I really do. This is a. F okay. This was such a great fucking video. Yeah, I love this. Let me go ahead and link it to you guys. Link it. Yeah, right here. There you go. The roast beef joke. Yeah, that was just fucking. <laughs> Ready to settle down. Holy fuck, man. Oh, that was hilarious. I mean, I, I do think that it's kind of hard to judge, like, the game based off of its peak, right? It's like, oh, yeah, I was good into fucking Bill Bang it, Bang it, let me tell you back in 2010. Oh, man, I was the shit. It's like, yeah, okay, Grandpa, let's get you to bed now. 
yeah, it's not that big of a deal. Most important is how it feels inside her. <laughs> true, true, true. And the fact is that World of Warcraft always does feel good to play. Um, I do think PvP needs a massive amount of improvements. I think that the way the game is designed is simply not fun for an average person. It's not fun for me. Uh, I, I don't like sitting in a fucking CC chain. It, it, it's fucking boring. It's not fun. It sucks. And I wish they would change it. However, I, I would say that this is a uh, th this is a good video, and and I do think that World of Warcraft probably is still th probably the goat MMO. I would agree with that. I I think that each MMO does something probably like the best. So like in my opinion, I think action combat is best in New World. New World has the best action combat out of any MMO. Lost Ark is the best isometric MMO, and it's not even close. All of the other ones are average at best. Uh, Albion Online might be good for PvP, however. Um, B I, I actually... You think BDO is better than... Uh, I, ha I haven't played BDO in like five years, so I can't, I, I, I can't speak on that. Maybe BDO is better. I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, I would say BDO has the best character creator, however. BDO is absolutely the best. Final Fantasy probably has the best story. World of Warcraft has the best in-game PvE content. Like uh, Mythic Plus, raiding, PvP. There's a lot to do in in-game for, uh, for WoW players. And they have a lot of really great side content too. With like mount farming, uh, per, uh, like professions, pets, transmog. Like all the completionism content. As somebody who cares about this stuff... I think that World of Warcraft does it better than any other game, and it's not even remotely close. Uh, I, I have not played Guild Wars 2, though, so I can't really compare it to that. El Elder Scrolls Online, I played like two or three days of it. That's it. Uh, Path of Exile, that's not an MMO. But yeah, this guy is fucking great, man. Like, I'll link you guys the video. You can give it a like and give him a sub if you liked it. This was such a good fucking video. I love this. Holy shit, this was amazing. I hope he makes more of them.